it's Dr. Chris with Texas Cairo Health, back with our 12 Minutes to Health. Uh, thank you guys for joining us yet again. This is one of my uh, favorite things that we do as a company is the 12 Minutes to Health. I started it because I wanted to be able to get the information about health and what the research, the medical research actually says about how to be healthy and how to live a healthier lifestyle. So um, it's a good way to get that out there. And now more and more of you are joining and I really appreciate that. I'd like to ask you guys if you could, you know, share this stuff with other people. It's, it's the biggest way that we can have an impact and get the information out there so that people can live a healthier lifestyle. Um, and that's our main goal at the end of the day is to really help people understand the importance of eating better, putting the right things into our body, getting more exercise, you know, moving more, and then managing our stress and thinking well. Um, those are the three tenets that we concentrate on because that's where the research has led us. And we're trying to make it as simple as possible for people to be healthy. So I really appreciate you guys sharing this information with friends, family, social media, wherever you think it necessary. Uh, please put this out there because we do spend a lot of time finding the right research for you um, so that you can give the right information to the friends and family that we're talking about. So we don't use the marketing. We don't use the case studies that are out there. We actually dig into the peer reviewed randomized controlled trial research that's there for you inside of the medical journals and the reviews of that research so that we can get the real answers that we're looking for on how to live a healthier lifestyle because it takes all three of those things eating well moving well and thinking well for you to be the healthiest version of you so that's where we concentrate our information so tonight's study that we're looking at has to do with thinking well and stress and what that does to your body this is one of those landmark studies that kind of takes all the studies that were out there with good information, good information, a little bit of bad information, whatever it is, it takes it all and it puts it together and it says, here's what the bulk of this information is saying and this is why it's important. So I really enjoy this study. There's a lot to it. 12 minutes is clearly not enough to get through it. So make sure you're joining us each and every Tuesday night in the office. Um, in each of our offices, we have refreshments, we have healthy green drinks, snacks, things like that. We have copies of the research that you can take home with you and dig through yourself. But most importantly, we have the doctors there to answer the questions that you have. Because I know I can't get them all answered for you in 12 minutes. Uh, I try to. I try to get as much information in there as I can for you. Uh, but it's not enough. And I understand that. And that's why we open up the office Tuesday night at 6 uh, for you guys to come in, meet the doctor, see what it's all about enjoy some snacks, but most importantly, like I said, get your questions answered. So looking at tonight's research uh, done by Viteta et al, it's called Stress and Its Impact on Overall Health and Longevity. And like I said, this is a compilation of studies, right? They put all these studies together, Viteta and his and the rest of his buddies, they dug through this stuff and they said, here's what it says when you put it all together and this is why it's important. And at the end of the day, when you look at the conclusions of the study, stress is a major player when it comes to us being either healthy or unhealthy. Uh, and not just stress, right? Because stress is unavoidable. We all have it. It's going to happen. But it's, um, it's, it's how are we managing it? What's our resilience to it, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and uh, just dealing with it overall and how that impacts our health. So great article. Make sure you stop by on Tuesday night and ask for a copy of it. Uh, so you can read through it as well, because it is a long article and 12 minutes, like I said, just isn't enough. The article starts out talking about mind-body medicine, right? It's even in the title, um, mind-body medicine, which was just taboo. Just 10 years ago, it was taboo to think, you know, oh, if I just think better, I won't get as sick. It sounded crazy, and it may still sound crazy to some of you, but the facts are, that when you start to manage your stress, when you have a more positive outlook, you're going to be less sick. Um, and I want to read a quote from the article to kind of start, and I don't want to misquote it, so I'm going to read it here. It says, this is how the article starts out, the most important factor in why a person becomes ill lies in the brain. Stress and pleasure play a critical role in wellness and disease, with stress contributing significantly to the risk of disease. Okay, so that's kind of how they start the study out, like just laying it all out there, right? Like if you're not thinking right, you're going to get sick. And not only is it important, it may be the most important part of health when you look at the eat well, move well, think well. And personally, I like to keep a balance between all three. I know that all three are important. But this article, they came out pretty hard like that on the front side to prove a point. 
because it was taboo. And they want to say, you know, the research shows it's not so taboo. It's a real thing. We need to manage our stress and we need to overcome our stress. They go on to talk about how stress is unavoidable, like I was saying. But if you feel good as a person, then stress has such a less effect on you, according to the research. Like if your stress, you're able to come overcome that stress so much easier just by feeling good. So I said, well, what is feeling good, right? Is it having a positive outlook? Is it being in shape? Is it, you know, eating the right thing so you don't feel bloated and inflamed? And it turns out it's all that stuff. And uh, which is kind of cool because it came down to eat well, move well, think well for us, right? Which it always does. It's not surprising, but this article, it all comes together. Um, and that's why I called it a landmark study in the beginning. But your ability to overcome stress has so much to do with your physical, mental, emotional state because stress is going to happen. You're going to have deadlines at work. You're going to have family stuff, spouse stuff. Uh, significant other stuff, right? All the stuff that plays into, did I leave the toaster on? I mean, everything you think of can create stress. But your overall feeling and how you view life changes how stress affects you. So that was one of the biggest takeaways that I took from this article is you've got to take care of yourself overall. You got to eat the right stuff. You've got to exercise and get movement in. Make sure your joints are moving correctly so that it's firing your brain in the right way so that when stress does happen, you're able to overcome it that much easier, which is what brings me to the resilience factor, which I mentioned earlier, right? Stress is unavoidable, just like traumatic events are unavoidable in life. You are going to lose loved ones at some point in your life. You're going to lose pets at some point in your life. Bad things are going to happen. People are going to have surgeries. People are going to get sick. People, you know, I mean, the list is endless about the stresses that can come into your life. And the good news is it's okay and it's absolutely necessary to be stressed or to feel anxiety or to feel a little bit of depression. That, you know, those different feelings that come on with those situations. The important part, the part that's most important of that is your ability to bounce back from it. What kind of mental fortitude or, you know, what kind of mental resilience do you have to where, yes, it affects you. You're not inhuman. You, you understand what's just happened and there's, a, there's an effect to it. But how do you bounce back from that? Your ability to bounce back from that is directly related to your health because it's a healthy thing to have those feelings and bounce back from them to understand that balance. I talk to you guys all the time about homeostasis. That is a return to homeostasis. Things are going to happen that knock you further away from homeostasis. And when you look at the mental side of it, they're totally unavoidable, right? If we look at eat well, it's avoidable to avoid, you can avoid the pizza, right? We don't always do it, but we can bounce back from it. And I think that's a good thing as well. But when you look at the stress and the mental aspects of it, some of it's unavoidable but we have to be able to bounce back for it. And that's why we need a mental fitness plan, right? We've got to take care of the mental side of things. We always know that it's important to go work out and exercise and walk each day, but we don't always take the time to just breathe each day or meditate or pray or just sit and think each day. And those are big things in building our resilience, just like lifting weights is a big thing in building our stress. So this, uh, this research article goes to show that the resilience is so much more important than the stress. If we can bounce back from the stress, the stress really doesn't matter all that much as long as we bounce back from it and we're able to return to homeostasis. So that was a great thing that they pointed out. They also pointed out that having an outlet is a big deal when managing stress. If you're going to truly manage stress to the point to where it doesn't knock you too far away from homeostasis, you're able to come back, the research shows that you have to have an outlet. You've got to have a social group, right? I did, a, I did one of these 12 Minutes to Health not too long ago on uh, the, our social interactions and how that affects our health. And being in constant isolation is terrible for us because we, we have us as a sounding board. So what we put out, we get right back and it starts to build in our brain. But when we get to get out there and be with friends and be with family and just have those social connections with people, we understand that everybody goes through this stuff. 
And it makes it that much easier to talk about it, to get it off our chest, if you will. And that actually makes us healthier because of the hormone changes and, and what it does to our brain that allows us to be healthier. We get to concentrate. We change our hormones in there. When we get rid of that stuff and we lower our cortisol, our immune function goes up. We are less likely to become sick because our cortisol went down, all because we were able to get this stuff off our chest. So it's a big deal to have an outlet and a social group and a social connection. So make sure that not only are you building your resilience and you have that kind of emotional or, or mental fitness plan for yourself, but make sure you make time to be with others and share and, and talk and experience with others because it makes a big difference as far as your resilience and your ability to back, bounce back towards homeostasis. A lot of this article talked about the placebo effect, which I find fascinating, right? because um, it truly shows the mind-body connection. Like you can think yourself well, right? And, and they've done it time and time again, and that's why they use it in randomized controlled trials. They wanna see how much of this is just people thinking they're gonna get better. Because if they think they're gonna get better, it's proven now that they actually can get better if they're truly believing that stuff. One of the greatest placebo studies that I ever read uh, was a, a surgeon who was doing knee surgeries. He was doing meniscus tear knee surgeries. And he was trying to prove that what he did in repairing meniscus or taking them out actually made the knee more stable. It made people feel better and everything like that. So he did a placebo randomized controlled trial and he broke people up into two groups. One, he actually did the surgery on. Two, he made the incisions right? And he just sprayed saline solution in there, just salt water in there. And he picked up the tools just like he normally would. The only difference was he didn't do anything to the meniscus. Stitched them both back up, let them back out. And then he brought them back in for their post-op recovery, you know, uh, visit to see how they were doing. And he got the same results on both sides. There were people that could barely walk that came into his office that he did nothing to except make two holes in their knees, stitch them back up, and they were back to playing basketball because they believed that they were doing the right thing for their body and that it was going to make them better. And lo and behold, it did, right? And that is the power of the mind. So good, positive thoughts can help us in that way. Negative thoughts can take us in the exact opposite direction the same way. And that's why stress is such a big factor in whether we get sick, whether we develop chronic illness, whether we you know, die early, whether the quality of our life is taken down. And that's what this study shows. It shows us how important it is. Or, well, it shows us how big of an effect stress can have, a negative effect, but how important it is for us to have that mental fitness and that resilience that brings us back. Because just by changing our mind, by changing our outlook, our perspective, we can change our health. And that has become less taboo thanks to studies like this. And that's a big deal. And the placebo effect's a big part of that. We understood that there was a placebo effect, but we didn't understand what exactly was behind it. The neurology, the, uh, they've actually created new sciences off of this, right? Psychoneuroimmunology, psycho, psychoneuroendocrinology. So what is, what is our belief process doing to our brain actually that's changing the chemicals in our bodies? And that's what this study is all about and how those chemicals change just by being resilient and, and responding to stress and lessening the stress that's in our life makes us healthier, which is a pretty big deal. And at the end of this study, which is my favorite part, right? They go in and they say, this is a big deal. Probably in, in this study, they say probably the most important part of health, but you cannot be healthy without putting the right stuff in your body, without exercising and practicing this resilience and having that mind-body connection. So it is always gonna come back to the whole package. And it's just interesting how they threw it all together with eat well, move well, think well. Um, so that's why it's important that you guys read through this study on your own because 12 minutes isn't enough, right? So get into the office, get a copy of this study and really dig into it so you can see the benefits of having a positive outlook and a positive mindset. And, uh, and then combining that with an eat well, move well, think well strategy to live a healthier lifestyle. And you guys are already heading on the right road just by tuning into these 12 minutes of health, right? So uh, thank you guys for joining us again today, right? Again, our biggest thing is getting the word out there. That's why we do these special offers. It's why we do the 12 minutes to health. I know that people are out there struggling with different things, whether it's illness, uh, pain, discomfort, headaches, you know, you name it, it's, it's a symptom. And that symptom's being caused by a breakdown somewhere in homeostasis. You're going to, getting further away from homeostasis. So let's figure out 
where you're getting away from homeostasis. And that's exactly what we do with this special offer in our office. You know, our, the biggest part of this, yes, we do the exam, we do the consultation, we take any x-rays that we need to, but we also use our spinal health assessment, which is a proprietary health software that we use in the office that assesses your entire lifestyle so we can find these breakdowns, right? Finds out how you're moving, how you're eating, and how you're thinking. And it prints you out a report with a score from 1 to 100, kind of a health score, a spinal health score for you, which is personalized, so that we can come up with a plan on how do we attack where you're breaking down and get you back towards homeostasis so you're living the life that you want to. And normally, you know, the cost in our office is about $289 for all those services, but we bring that down to just a $39 donation to our local monthly charity from you, and that covers everything there. And we'll go over everything with you and come up with a plan for just that $39 donation. So, you know, we're trying to remove all the barriers, all the excuses that have stopped you from taking care of yourself in the past. So uh, take advantage of this, guys. Give us a call. The numbers are here on the screen, but I mean, give us a call, get into the office, come in on Tuesday nights, um, you know, help us spread the word about health and what the research actually says, because we don't have to be as sick as we are currently as a, as a country, as, a, as humanity, right? We don't have to be this sick. So let's get past it. Uh, let's get the answers that you deserve and get into the office. I appreciate you guys joining every week, uh, and I'll see you next week for our 12 Minutes to Health. Thanks, guys.